Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm doing part two of Cricut hacks that I learned on TikTok. I made my first one back in the summer and I have gotten so many requests to do a second one. I have 15 new hacks. I will have everyone's TikTok account down in the description box where I learned these hacks. So definitely go check them out and support them. I'll also link my first TikTok hack video down in the description box if you missed that one. Also, if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you subscribed. It is completely free to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let's just get into the tutorial. This first hack is an awesome one. You'll need these mini wheels. I bought the ones that she had recommended on Amazon. I'll link them in the description box below. You'll also need four command strips. First, I just take out four of the wheels and I take out all four command strips from the package. Then I take the backing off the strips and add it to the wheels. Next, I turn my Cricut machine around and place the other strips on the bottom. Then you can add the wheels by connecting the two command strips. I also want to mention if you change or add anything to your Cricut machine, just be careful with it possibly voiding your warranty. I didn't place the bottom two wheels on completely straight. They were a little at an angle. So I do wish I would have done that to make it a little bit easier to push the Cricut machine. And you can see part of the command strips on the front of the Cricut. So you might want to move those strips a little further back so you can't see those. It might be a little harder to tell in the video, but it is so much easier to move my Cricut maker back and forth. If you have the maker, you know it's really heavy. So I thought this was a great hack. The next hack is a weeding hack. If you've watched my channel for a while now, you'll know I love my nail polish holder for helping me weed adhesive vinyl. This is $10 on Amazon, but you can make this using a Dollar Tree item. Grab a travel dressing holder from the Dollar Tree and an X-Acto knife or scissors. Turn the holder over and cut slits in an X on the bottom of it. This is pretty thin, so it's really easy to cut through. You can see it's very similar to the nail polish holder. Here I am weeding vinyl with this and it works the exact same. Another thing that I like about this is you can just take the cap off to easily remove the vinyl. In my last TikTok hack video, I had a lot of people tell me you can find nail polish holders at the Dollar Tree. So here is the one from the Dollar Tree and this one works just as well too. Next, I have another Dollar Tree hack. You'll want to look for this chopper. You'll also want some blue painter's tape. You don't need it to be this wide, but I ordered this online and didn't realize that I got that size. I am going to make this into a scraper. All you need to do is place tape along the edge of the chopper to help it make it not so rough. I'm going to add some transfer paper to my vinyl to show you how this works. Here's the XL Cricut scraper, and as you can see, this Dollar Tree scraper is a little bigger than the Cricut one. I use my scraper all the time, so I thought this was an awesome hack. This hack is a way to quickly weed tiny pieces. I was actually shocked by how well this worked. Here is a butterfly design I cut out from Cricut Design Space. I'm going to be using blue painter's tape again. All you need to do is cut out a piece of the tape, then press it against the vinyl design and pull the tape away. It will take up almost all of the vinyl pieces. Seriously, so amazing. If you have a big project to weed with tiny pieces, this is a great solution. This is how much was weeded out and all of that took just a couple seconds. Then you can go back in and weed out the rest that was missed. This next hack is an easy way to remove vinyl from a shirt using an easy press mini or you can use an iron. I decided to set my easy press mini to the medium setting. Once it's heated up, place it underneath your shirt under the vinyl piece that you want to remove. Here I'm going to remove the one. 
Then grab tweezers and just pull it off. This was another hack that I loved and it was super easy to remove it this way. Next, I wanna show you these pen adapters to allow you to use other pens besides just the Cricut ones. These are from Amazon and I'll have a link down in the description box for them. It comes with three different ones and an insert that shows you which pens work with which adapter. I also want to remind you again that these could void your machine warranty. I know my machine was one year through the Cricut website and it's already past that warranty. I'm choosing the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point, which says to place it in the SUFP adapter. You'll need to remove the Cricut pen adapter in clamp A, then place the SUFP adapter in the machine. Next, place the Sharpie inside and you'll want to push it down so it's right up against the adapter. Here's how it works with the Sharpie drawing. It worked great for me and I think this is an awesome way to be able to use other pens. For the next hack, I'm going to use blue painter's tape as transfer tape. This looks great for signs. You'll want to place a strip at the top of the design and work your way down with each piece of tape overlapping a little. Then use your scraper tool to scrape the front and back. Then remove the backing of the vinyl. This is the low tack tape, so it was really easy to remove the backing. Next, grab the blank you are adding the vinyl to. You can easily separate part of the design as you can see I started to do here, or add the entire design to your blank. You can remove the tape piece by piece, giving you a little more control when taking off the transfer tape. The vinyl also stays in place really well. You can save the tape and reuse it as well. I think this would be a great option for transfer tape if you make a lot of signs. This next hack will help with sizing, especially with shirts, but I think it could help with sizing for any blank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make nine squares. I'm gonna go over to my shapes and grab the first square. The first one I'm gonna make 11 inches. I'll just type in 11 and hit enter. I just let it automatically adjust. It'll make it even, so it'll make it 11 by 11. Then I'm going to go over here and hit duplicate. I'm going to type in 10 inches next, and I'm gonna do the same thing all the way down to three inches. So I'll go back, hit duplicate, then I'll do nine. Then I'll hit duplicate, hit eight, and I'll keep going down. Okay, I have all of those duplicated and sized. The only thing I wanna do is just double check that I have all of those correct. So I'm just gonna go over to my layers panel and just double check real quick. Now I'm going to go over and click make it. I'm going to be using 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock for this. I'll click continue. Then I'm going to select medium cardstock. It actually is 65 pounds, so you could probably do light cardstock as well. Here's the cardstock colors I'm going to use. You can use whatever colors you want. I have the Cricut cut all of the squares following the prompts on the Cricut Design Space screen. Once that's done, line up the corners of each square and hole punch the corner. I had to separate some of it because my hole punch could not punch through the whole entire thing. But after that, add string through the hole to keep it connected together. Now add the sizes on each one. Here's a few examples on how you can use this to help figure out your vinyl sizing on your blanks. Most sizing won't be a perfect square like these, but I think this is great for figuring out the width. My next hack is using Dollar Tree index dividers to make a reusable stencil. 
I picked these up at the Dollar Tree and took one of the index dividers out and placed it on my mat. I chose stencil film for my setting. Since this is a stencil, when weeding this, you want to weed out the actual design, which is the opposite of what you normally weed. One thing I didn't like about this is it doesn't have a sticky backing. In her TikTok video, she had a big M letter, so it didn't have any inside pieces. I decided to add transfer tape on top of this stencil to help carry it over to my wood blank. Then I set it on my wood blank and removed the transfer paper. The stencil also moved around on the wood since it doesn't have that sticky backing, but she recommended adding Mod Podge to help prevent the paint bleeding, but I also used it to help hold the stencil in place. I waited for the Mod Podge to fully dry, then I was ready to paint. I'm using makeup sponges that I found on Amazon for my stencil and I love these. Once the paint was almost all the way dry, I removed the stencil. You can see where I had placed the Mod Podge and the paint lines weren't perfect. Part of that is because my wood base wasn't as smooth as it should be. Overall, I think this would be great if you have a bigger stencil without little pieces in the middle and you can just clean off the stencil and use it over and over again. I think this next hack is my favorite hack. I am going to show you an awesome way to roll flowers. Normally when rolling flowers, you'll need a quilling tool. I'll show you quickly how it works if you haven't seen how paper flowers work yet. You'll place the cardstock in the little slit in the quilling tool and start rolling the paper flower. If you have a lot of flowers to make, this can take up quite a bit of time. So here's the awesome hack. Use a power drill and a bobby pin to roll the flowers. Place the bobby pin inside the drill, then tighten the drill over it. I have the drill set to reverse. Then I set the cardstock inside the slit of the bobby pin and lightly press the trigger on the power drill. With my other hand, I guide the cardstock so it stays in line. Not gonna lie, I was intimidated to try this at first after seeing this TikTok hack, but it actually is so much easier than it looks. Once it's almost all the way rolled, then I loosen the drill and take the bobby pin out. I let go of the flower a little to loosen it and get the bobby pin out. This seriously cuts down on so much time. I finish rolling the flower by hand, then turn it over and use my hot glue gun to glue the flap onto the back of the flower. I always think these turn out so pretty. Another quick tip, you can use your quilling tool to roll the petals back a little so it's less stiff and looks a little more real. Here's another Dollar Tree hack. Juniper Point Design Co. has a ton of Dollar Tree hacks over on her TikTok account. You can find these pineapple makeup brush cleaners there and they work great to clean paint off of your paintbrushes. Whenever I have the Cricut cut out a project, I place the vinyl on the mat and once it's done, I'll remove the vinyl from the mat and cut it with scissors. With this hack, you can eliminate the need to cut with scissors by having your Cricut do it for you. So a cool thing that I saw on TikTok that you can do is eliminate the need to cut with scissors by putting a square around your design. This was using a silhouette, so I'm gonna show you how to do this with a Cricut machine. I'll go over to my shapes, then grab a square. Then I'm gonna hit send, right click and hit send to back. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller because this will help just reduce the amount of vinyl that we're using. Then I'm going to select on the square, hit unlock, and make it a little bit smaller. 
What I'm going to do is keep this butterfly the color of whatever vinyl you're going to be using and then this square I'm just going to keep it a different color. I'm going to have the Cricut cut the square deeper than the butterfly so I'm going to click on make it and I'll show you how I do this. I have to make these two different colors because I'm going to need two different settings on my Cricut. So if I were to make this butterfly the same color as the square, the Cricut will cut it with the all the same setting. So that's where it gets a little confusing with the Cricut machine. But basically we're gonna have to unload our mat and reload it back in. And I'll show you how I do that. But I wanna make sure that this butterfly will fit in this square. So if you look here, the butterfly is up pretty far compared to the square. So I'm gonna move the butterfly down just a little bit. And if I go back to my square, it looks like it doesn't quite reach to the three and it goes a little below the two. So we don't wanna bring it too far over and we don't wanna bring it too far down. But I think that looks pretty good there. We just wanna make sure that the butterfly is gonna end up inside of the square. I'm gonna click back on this and I'll hit continue. First, it's going to be cutting out our square. I'm going to be cutting out vinyl for this, but since I want the square to cut deeper, I am going to select cardstock. I am just gonna do medium cardstock, so I'll select that, and I'll show you what I do on the Cricut machine. I place the vinyl on the mat and load it into the Cricut machine. It'll cut out the square using the cardstock setting. I'll unload the mat once it's done, then directly reload the mat in the machine. Now that I've unloaded the mat and reloaded it, it's going to cut out the butterfly, but I don't want it to be medium cardstock because I want the butterfly to have what's called a kiss cut where it doesn't cut all the way through the vinyl sheet. So I'm going to go up to here, then select vinyl, and I'll show you on the machine how it does this. The machine will cut out the vinyl butterfly. As you can see, the Cricut cuts the butterfly right inside of the square. Now you can just take the vinyl sheet off and it already has it cut for you and you can start weeding out the butterfly. For me personally, I feel like it's easier to just cut it out with scissors, but I think it's pretty cool and I might start doing this more regularly. This next hack I thought was a really good idea. I don't know a single Cricut crafter who has not forgotten to do this, but that is mirror your design. So if you're using iron-on or HTV, you'll need to mirror your design. Normally when you click on make it, you can do it right here. Or if you hit continue and forget, you can also mirror it over here by hitting edit and selecting mirror but it's very easy to forget that and waste money on vinyl because you forgot to mirror your design. So when you're creating something in Cricut Design Space already, what you can do is go up to flip at the top here, select that, then hit flip horizontally, and it's already mirrored. So I thought that was kind of a cool hack, especially since you're already doing things in Design Space. Sometimes you kind of forget about it when you go to the Make It screen, so I liked that hack a lot. For my next hack, I want to show you how to clean up an image that you found off of Google. I'll go to my Uploads, then I will just select an image that I found online. What I'm going to do is hit Complex, then I am going to hit Continue. I'll show you what I normally do. Normally I would hit complex and then delete all of the background. When I zoom in, you can see there's pieces. You can click on it and try to clean it up. But let me show you when I hit continue and select this. I'm gonna insert this into Cricut Design Space so you can see. So when I zoom out, you can see it's fuzzy and it's not clear, crisp lines. Now I'm going to go back to my uploads, then upload that again, and I'll show you how you can clean up that image. So I wanna select complex again, then I'll hit continue, but you'll wanna go over to your advanced options. Select on that, it'll most likely say unmodified. You'll want to select two, which is the lowest one. Then if you come over here, you want to increase it. I'm just going to try 50 and I'm going to start deleting the backgrounds. I'm going to increase this just a little bit because it's starting to erase the border. That looks better.
and select on the image. Then I'll insert this into Cricut. I'm gonna move this over and I'll increase this so that you can see this a little bit better. But look how much better that looks. It is so crazy, the difference. I absolutely love this hack. On the iPad, there's a couple different ways to clean up an image, but it's different than on a desktop. So if you are trying to do this on an iPad, there is a little different way to do that. I just wanna show these side by side. You can see the crisp lines on this one compared to that one. This next hack I saw on TikTok and I swiped past it, so I don't know who shared this, but I do this all the time and I thought it would be a quick little tip to share with you. If you go to text and if you go to a script font, I'm gonna do a thin one, which makes it even harder. I'll select that and I'm just gonna type in hello. So as you probably know, script font is never connected together in Cricut Design Space. I'm really hoping it's something that Cricut could fix in the future. But when connecting this together, you can bring the letter spacing in a little bit, but it never matches up just right or it rarely does. So then you need to ungroup and do it yourself. But for me, what is, makes it so much easier is either making the font way bigger or zooming all the way in. So I brought it back to about where it was before. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. Now that it's bigger, it is so much easier to connect these letters together. So what I usually do is go over to my letter space and bring it in as much as possible. Then I'll go over to ungroup and just slide the other ones over. But especially with a really tiny font like this, this makes it so easy. Another thing you can do is zoom in also. And whenever you're putting script font together, you should weld it. If you don't weld it, then you'll see cut lines in your vinyl. So I'm gonna select this whole thing and hit weld. And then I'll just bring it smaller and there you go. Here is the final hack. This is a great way to store either scrap cardstock or scrap vinyl. I picked up these plastic zip envelopes from the Dollar Tree and all you need to do is separate it by color or even by type of vinyl. I'm organizing these by separating it by colored cardstock. You can label these with final decals as well and you can just place them in a basket or a drawer. That is it for the hacks that I found on TikTok. I might do another one. Let me know if you would like to see another TikTok hack video. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you are new. I would love to have you here.